already hit y'all with all the intro stuff in part one so we're just gonna get right to it right now we're discussing monday august 8th day 11 of practice if you didn't already go check out part one of this video technically that's split into two videos where i break down everything that went down with fedex field like i normally do with every training camp practice again this is part two talking about day 11 august 8th as in monday today and let's go ahead and get to it man first of all now that jaquez ezard is gone was waived with an injury settlement i'm sad about it but it is what it is at this point. I was rooting for him. You know, he's from Atlanta, so I was, man, I really hoped he would make an impact and be like a Steven Sims for us. But either way, he's gone. So this will probably be the last video that I talk about him. But the reason I brought him up is because he's almost always the guy that's out there first. Now with Jaquez Ezzard not here, Taylor Heineke was the first one to be on the field for today's practice. Also, in really funny news, John Kahn was working on some coordination drills. I believe it's with Randy Jordan. So he was running like some running back drill. I don't know what was going on, but it looked really funny. And so of course people are making jokes and saying, well, just in case if ESPN lets him go, he can always be a running back for the Washington Commanders. Also, today was a no pass practice. FedEx field was full pads, contact and everything. But today, Monday, is no pads now let's get to the injuries on the side field of course you have your typical pup guys chase young logan thomas but then also on the side field with those guys you had cole turner with the hamstring and now we have curtis hodges on the side field you have troy apke again rashad hill at tackle and tackle cornelius lucas but i'm glad that cornelius lucas is finally here I mean, a lot of the practices, he hasn't, he's either not just been there or he hasn't even like suited up. Now, at least he's on the side field. Still don't exactly know what's going on because Ron Rivera keeps acting like he should be back very soon. But hey, at least he's here. Also, William Jackson III was on the side field still dealing with the hamstring injury that's the reason he wasn't participating in the saturday night fedex field practice and now that's three practices in a row that he's not participating and also add sadiq charles to that list of guys on the side field but in very very good news we had to get some of the bad news out the way first tight end john Bates dealing with the calf injury is finally back participated in individual drills for the first time in all of training camp great news man i love to hear that arguably the best blocking tight end already in the nfl only going into his second year and he wasn't even a starter his rookie season so this is still technically like a rookie ish season for him again already one of the best blocking tight ends in the nfl pro football focus literally thinks he is the best blocking tight end and he has good hands and it, like you saw in that cowboys game he can run people over for some yak yardage man i'm super excited about him i'm so glad to have him back also james smith williams is now back remember james smith williams is supposed to be the starting defensive end with chase young on the pup list but he's been out so casey two has been taking his place as the starting defensive end opposite of montez sweat and casey two made the most of it made a lot of really good plays he was one of the forced fumbles against Antonio Gibson that one day that he had two fumbles but now that James Smith Williams is back healthy and participating he is now the starting defensive end again while Chase Young is on the pup list and will be our starting defensive end going into the Jaguars game more than likely the Lions game more than likely the Philadelphia game and so on and so forth until we get Chase Young back now moving to the quarterbacks Carson Wentz another up and down day some good some bad and seven on sevens he had two pass breakups by Danny Johnson and Kendall Fuller and both of those were him targeting Terry they're still not on the same page we need to work on that luckily for us he's on the same page with cole turner and Jahan dodson like they've been together for years but terry mclaurin was still working on it but at the same time he did complete two passes to terry mclaurin and one deep to dax milne and it sounds like dax milne has been consistently making plays these past few days of camp so if he can return if they trust him to return he probably makes the roster over alex erickson and Kyrie mcgowan but we'll see and don't forget mark and michelle man he's been balling so much it's just like we got to find a way to keep him on the team somehow and he also had a really good completion like a 15 yard completion to Jahan dotson as well i mean they're going to connect every day even as great as kendall fuller has been montez sweat and a lot of people in defense have been carson wins to Jahan dotson is as automatic as it's going to get in a training camp practice and i'm hoping it's the same thing in the regular season and the postseason also sam howe looked really good today and showed off his arm talent in seven on seven drills he had a bullet to alex armand in a tight window which is really interesting because he's a fullback but it was a very tight window throw and then he also had a nice touch pass to armani rogers again armani rogers making plays love to hear it but it was thrown with great accuracy and thrown with the right angle and arc that it needed to get so that armani rogers can be the only one that could get it all of that and then he also threw a really nice zip pass to dax milne over the middle of a 15 yards 
and that was one of those throws that really showed his arm strength even though it was only 15 yards how fast it got there i mean just a straight dart to him the secondary didn't have a chance to even close in on it because the ball got there too fast and that's one of the things that sam Howell brings to this team if he ends up playing as a quarterback for us corners dbs linebackers just don't have as much of an opportunity to react they don't have as much time and then running back wise nothing very notable from antonio gibson or brian robinson just a pretty simple day for those guys but again it was really interesting to hear that the fullback alex arma was out here catching passes from sam howell granted it's with the third team because again sam howell is out there as the third team quarterback with the third team offense going against the third team defense but still a fullback is out there catching passes and i'm rooting for alex arma another guy from atlanta so i mean if he can end up making this team somehow i'd be happy about that but if it's him or the tight ends i really love like armani rogers and curtis hodges and things like that i'm sadly gonna have to choose my tight ends over him even though we may end up keeping him as a fullback or at the very least on the practice squad then moving on to the wide receivers in an 11 on 11 period curtis samuel had a few catches from carson wentz and again just like saturday night looks completely unbothered by contact it just looks like 100 curtis samuel like we hoped we would get when we first signed him it doesn't look like any injury issues any conditioning issues none of that and granted there'll probably be a ramp down in the near future because again ron rivera is going to keep ramping them up ramping them down but in every practice that he's been like a full participant and even though today they didn't have pads on but saturday night they did he's perfectly fine through contact he's running his routes very crisp he's very smooth he literally looks like what we thought we'd get when we signed him so that's really good to hear also like i said earlier terry mclaurin made a couple of plays per usual dax milne had one really good deep pass again like i said earlier he's been making plays consistently in training camp so he's trying to make sure he's one of those guys that makes the 53 man roster you already know man when it comes to those last like five spots you're not only competing against other guys in your position group and in dax milne's case wide receiver you're competing against the last guys trying to make the team in every position the last few safeties on the depth chart the last few offensive linemen linebackers everybody and of course like i said john dotson from carson and Wentz is automatic every day he's always going to catch something that's just uncoverable and then tight end wise again great news probably the best news of the day it's tied between John Bates great news and Armani Rogers great news for my two favorite things today from Monday's practice day 11 August 8th but we're gonna get to Armani Rogers soon we're gonna stay with John Bates for now again he was back at practice even though he was limited in team reps he still took them he wasn't just strictly on the side field strictly doing individual stuff when they got the team drills he was out there he didn't do a lot but he was still out there which makes me very happy they're gonna slowly ramp him up again if anything they're gonna be overly cautious with everybody so again if there were a game today john Bates is probably playing and starting and is going to be out there as much as possible but it's practice they don't want to risk anything serious while it's only practice and nothing we do today counts in the win or loss column and ron rivera even spoke about it after practice he said quote we're gonna ramp him up every day now unquote so he didn't say anything about ramping up and ramping back down like curtis samuel sounds like it's just gonna be be a slow ramp up till he's 100 fully participating so i'm really excited about that and then my boy armani rogers you see the smile on my face when i talk about armani rogers man today was his best day of practice so far in all of the off season all of training camp he had a really nice catch remember in the fedex field practice that i talked about in part one of this video and then he had two more today and again, with Logan Thomas on pup list, John Bates still slowly working his way back. Cole Turner out with the hamstring injury. Samus Reyes is participating, but he's still dealing with the hamstring injury as well. And then even Curtis Hodges was on the side field today. So technically, Armani Rogers was tight end one today. Remember, we just signed Eli Wolf from Georgia, but Armani Rogers is clearly the guy I prefer over him easily. And I'm so glad to hear that he's out here making great plays, man. Everybody's talking about how he's fully taking advantage of all of the tight ends before him being out. Out and him being able to get more reps and more snaps and more targets especially he had three receptions today and two of them were super acrobatic and like things that only like a handful of guys on this entire team could have made that has me super happy man like i keep saying man to me he has darren waller potential develop that it may take a year or two maybe even more than that but develop that and you have yourself a star and I'm even seeing around Twitter that people feel like Armani Rogers has been one of the standouts in the last few days of practice. That's literally just music to my ears. That's all I want to hear. 
and then offensive line and defensive line wise nothing very notable today pretty typical day for all of those groups so going straight to linebacker you still have david mayo taking first team snaps over jamin davis when they do their bigger packages though when it's run stuff when it's red zone stuff that's when david mayo's out there in pretty much every other situation jamin davis is usually with the first teams but i still hate to hear it and actually i could have included this in the defensive line part just real quick before we got to the linebackers but whenever they run the extra defensive linemen when they run five defensive linemen like i've been talking about for the past few videos because i'm expecting to see that quite a bit and probably even more often than we've seen in previous years since jack derrio has been here this upcoming season will probably be the most that we see the five defensive linemen look we're definitely going to see that far more than three linebackers we're going to see five dbs the most probably like 70% of the time, five defensive linemen, probably like 25% of the time, and maybe three linebackers 5% of the time if I had to guess right now. But when they're in that five defensive linemen, Fedarian Mathis is obviously the guy in the middle. Deron Payne and Jonathan Allen are your two defensive tackles with Fedarian Mathis as your nose tackle. And then Montez Sweat and James Smith Williams until Chase Young gets back are your edge rushers. And they mostly run that when we're in those red zone, obvious run and play type of situations. When David Mayo's out there, we're typically in that five defensive lineman look. They kind of go hand in hand. We're in the five defensive line look to stop the run. David Mayo is also out there to stop the run. Ron Rivera also spoke about the Nathan Gary signing. And I'm going to do a whole breakdown of a lot of the quotables from the press conferences today from Jamin Davis, Ron Rivera, and others. But I wanted to include this in the linebacker part because I just wanted to go ahead and keep that organized with the linebackers. But he mentioned the Nathan Gary signing and basically said that they just wanted somebody that can run and cover. So that's the main reason he's being brought here. Even though, like I already talked about in my video, breaking down his weaknesses and strength, he can rush the passer he's decent in run fits and stopping the run what he's probably best at is coverage but at times i'm not gonna lie sometimes he's better at rushing the passer than he is in coverage so we'll see then defensive back wise not a lot to note just the same typical day of pretty much everybody looking pretty good nobody was really bad nobody was just like significantly more exceptional than they normally are like I said Cameron McCurl is always having good days that's just what he does but Danny Johnson and Kendall Fuller had some really good pass breakups on Terry McLaurin so that was Danny Johnson's revenge for that Terry McLaurin deep bomb in the Saturday night practice at FedEx Field I thought that was pretty funny and then also Steven Parker who we just signed yesterday almost got a pick working with the third team unit that dart that I was talking about earlier where he barely fitted into the fullback Alex Armand that was Steven Parker on coverage and he almost had the interception he was like right there a half a step too late but I like the fact that I'm hearing him doing pretty well in coverage granted it was against a fullback so you're supposed to be able to cover him well but still he's out there making plays after only being here for less than 24 hours and then special teams wise, only thing really to note is that before the practice started, while guys were still warming up, you had Alex Erickson and Kyrick McGowan getting in extra punt return drills. Because like I said, Dax Milne and Jahan Dotson are definitely in the lead right now for punt return duties and just making the roster period. And so it's going to be really interesting to see if Alex Erickson or Kyrick McGowan can somehow steal probably a spot from Dax Milne to be that primary returner. And like I said, Jahan Dotson is probably just going to be like a specialized returner for when we really really need a play like when the Chiefs really needed a play they would throw Tyreek Hill back there sometimes and I feel like that can be a Jahan Dotson type of situation but we're gonna need a guy to be the primary returner every other situation just on any normal play and we're trying to see if it's gonna be Dax Milne, Alex Erickson or Kyrick McGowan at this point and then moving on let's get to these press conferences and the most important quotes first of all Ron Rivera spoke on Logan Thomas and he said while he's on the pup list right now so far he's doing pretty good now that's not necessarily like an amazing update but i am happy to hear that it's positive news it's not any significant news but at the very least it's not bad so logan thomas sounds like he's pretty much on track for what he was already supposed to do and whenever he's supposed to come back we still don't exactly know when but at least he's on track and on time also rivera said that he appreciates the maturity from fa obata that he's shown the last few weeks and that with him being a freak athlete and super physical really all he has to work on is technique and he has improved in technique but the most notable thing that he said about fa obata is that ron rivera feels like he's an excellent special teams player so that right there just go ahead and mark fa obata is one of the guys that's going to make the 53 man roster i mean first of all he's one of the very few free agency signings that we made from outside of our team this offseason even though he is a former carolina panther but still the fact that ron rivera pointed him out isolated him 
as an excellent special teams player, he's making the roster. All of those guys, Samus Reyes, Troy Apke, you can maybe even include Danny Johnson in there, Derek Forrest, and also F.A. Obata, and even Cam Sims. All of those guys are very, very likely to make the roster because they all play special teams very well for different reasons and different ways, playing different roles. But either way, just the overall umbrella of special teams, all of those guys are very important to this team. Also, Ron Rivera spoke on Joey Sly, and he basically said that in Carolina, when they were together, he said that he hoped he'd make it. But now he feels like Joey Sly acts like he's going to make the kick. And that's huge, man. Confidence is huge in sports, period. But especially as a kicker. Like, if you don't feel like you're going to make it, if you're just going out there and like, oh, man, I hope I make this, I'm nervous, you're going to usually miss it. But now that he approaches each kick like this is going in, I'm one of them guys. I'm one of them. I mean, he swole. I just assumed that he was more confident than he was in Carolina. But the fact that his mentality has changed and he's out here pretty much making every kick that we need him to. And we finally look like we have a franchise kicker that we can hopefully hold on to for like the next 10 plus years. That's huge. Because again, like I'm going to keep saying, we lost at least one or two games last year just purely because of kicker. I mean, granted, there were a lot of things that went wrong in every game that we lost. But if we had Joey Sly since week one, we probably win eight or nine games last season with no other changes. Also, Samuel Cosby me had a press conference and he said that the difference between last season and this season are night and day and you love to hear that granted a lot of players are usually going to say that they're not just going to come out and say nah i haven't gotten better nah i haven't really progressed nah this pretty much feels just like last year i'm probably just as raw they're usually going to say things like that but the usage of the words night and day sounds like a dramatic difference so that does make me excited but again you still can't read into what the players say too much you can't buy into it but we'll see i can't wait to see him go out there and produce so far he's looked really good in camp so it sounds like he's telling the truth also jamin davis had a press conference as well and he said in his second year that he's loving training camp so far and he feels like it's going to be a big season for him most notably because he feels like he's 10 times more comfortable in year two than last year same points that i made with samuel cosme he's supposed to say those things but we'll see if we can actually believe it soon enough he also said that everything has slowed down for him moving in year two and that's one of the things you want to hear the most especially for a young linebacker that was struggling the year before the game slowing down for him is probably the biggest thing that can help him honestly that was like his main problem granted i'm still worried about him as far as working through trash and dealing with the offensive line and working in the trenches but even worse than that was the game being too fast for him and if the game slowed down for him and it sounds like from what i've seen so far in training camp or what i've heard from everybody that's been going to training camp jamin davis looks way better than he did last year again david mayo still getting a lot of the snaps over him for some weird reason in the red zone but whenever jamin davis is out there he makes the most of it and again he definitely looks improved from last year not really saying much from how inconsistent he was but people are going to stop sleeping on the fact that he did have flashes last year people act like he was just completely terrible and he was a bust he's not a bust granted he may never live up to being a first round pick but i think he'll end up being a really good linebacker for us and i think he's going to be really good this year as well we're going to see a huge jump in improvement also jamin davis while addressing the media spoke on camera curl and said that his communication has also jumped to another level like they don't have any issues communication wise and Cameron Curl is one of the main reasons for it. He's able to talk to the linebackers, the safeties, the corners, everybody and help everybody get to where they need to be and recognizing and seeing certain things from the opposing offense. And then speaking of that, Jamin Davis also talked about the fact that the overall defense period is communicating way better than they did last year. And that's great to hear because that was one of our biggest problems. Also, throughout the interview, at some point in the press conference, Jamin Davis referred to Cole Holcomb as mullet man, which is pretty funny. I felt like I should include that. And then lastly, two random pieces of news. I know a lot of y'all saw the Barstool Sports tweet where they said, let's check in on Commander's practice. And it was the mega sci-fi people doing their dances and stuff like that. And Barstool's trying to make fun of it. First of all, they were super late. That was literally from OTAs. And secondly, I don't know why people would have a problem with that. First of all, it was in warmups. It wasn't like it was just mid practice it was before practice even started it was while people were stretching and also i mean just like jason wright brought up a great point when he replied to the tweet that people always complain about the nfl being a no fun league and then when they see stuff like this they want to complain about that as well and then he also said third this isn't random dancing is representing the omega sci-fi fraternity a historically black civic organization dating back to 1911 
And then he also included a link and said a link to learn. So I love that tweet from Jason, right? He doesn't tweet often, but when he does, it's very effective. And then lastly, wanted to end this video with this for sure. I saved this for last. Five-year-old Sophie Manning attended practice today as part of the Make-A-Wish Foundation. Even before the practice started, everybody was outside and saying hi to her and everything, had signs, it was beautiful. And also, there was an update that she finished with in-person treatments for leukemia, and then she'll be finished with all treatments in September. So that's great news, man, for sure, for sure. Shouts out to Sophie Manning. You just love to hear stuff like that. But yeah, man, that's the end of this video. Please get in the comment section. Let me know how you feel about everything discussed in this video. Please leave a like on this video if you liked it, if you learned anything. And as always, man, I appreciate all the support, man. Shouts out to all of my sponsors, especially my Pro Bowl sponsors. You name me, see scrolling on the screen right now. I'm going to catch y'all later. I'm out. <laughs>